One of the terms sports card hobbyists throw around is high number. A high number card is a term used for vintage cards, and 1974 was about the cutoff for utility in this case. If you see any modern card listed as a high number, the seller is either uninformed or dishonest, usually the latter. Back in the day, Topps released partial sets of cards throughout the year, in series. Most years had at least three, and some up to seven series of cards. Series one would hit just before the season was starting, and subsequent series would come out as the season progressed. This assured that kids needed to keep coming back all year for gum to get the cards. The problem was that school would start in late August and September, as the baseball season was still going. Sports fans would start watching football, too. So at the end of the season, there was less interest in baseball as attentions strayed. Tops responded by printing less cards later in the season, since there was less demand. Fast forward 50 years, as collections were thrown out, damaged, and lost. And there are very few of some of these cards left. The cards from the later series, with the higher card numbers. The high numbers. Some years are worse than others. 1959, for example, has high numbers, cards 509 and above. But they're still pretty easy to find, and will only cost a few bucks more than a common card. Take Ruben Gomez here, card 535. It's a high number, and will cost around 8 bucks for a good one. Most 59 commons go for around $4 each, give or take. So yeah, that's double the price, but it's still only 8 bucks for collectors and set builders. 1952, though? Those high numbers, cards 311 and above, are truly rare. Tops waited so late to bring out the final series of cards that year, and misjudged the market demand, and just couldn't sell them. Thousands and thousands of cards sat in a warehouse. They couldn't give them away. The kids had already moved on to the 53 sets, and nobody cared about last year's cards. So they sat in a warehouse for almost a decade, until Topps needed the space. So, Topps just threw them away. How could they have possibly known that 70 years later, a bunch of idiosyncratic hoarders would be desperately searching for cardboard pictures of baseball players used to sell gum to kids? And by throw them away, I really mean dump them in the ocean. Some 500 cases of 1952 Topps high number cards were loaded on a barge and dumped in the Atlantic. We'll explore this story in exhaustively researched detail in a later episode. It's fun to think about what those cards would be worth. Millions, right? But if the cards weren't thrown away, then there would be way more of them, and prices wouldn't be nearly as high. And they wouldn't be nearly as difficult to find. What's the fun in that? There are four Phillies cards in the 1952 High Number series. Russ Meyer, Carl Drews, Ken Heinzelman, and Smokey Burgess. They're decent players, but not anything close to Hall of Famers. Their cards, though, far surpass the value of Robin Roberts or Richie Ashburn's cards. Russ Meyer, card 339, is probably the easiest one to find. And it ain't easy. Russ Meyer was a whiz kid and a solid pitcher for the few years that he played in Philly. Current eBay market value is about $165, with only 34 cards sold in the last year. Carl Drews, card 352, was another right-handed pitcher, but not an exceptionally good one. He had a career losing record and an ERA over 6. 1952 was his first year with the Phillies, and he's probably most famous for being a high number in the 52 top set. Current market value here is about $290, with only 26 sold in the past year. In high grade, most 52 high numbers will sell well north of $1,000, and this one is no different. A PSA 8 sold in May of 2023 for 1250 Ken Heinzelman was a whiz kid too, along with Russ Meyer. His card, number 362, gives us his nickname of Cannonball, which is mentioned on other cards as well. He had a career-losing record, but like many players of his era, he lost three of his prime playing years to military service, saving the world in WW2. He pitched in 319 total games with Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. 1952 was his last year in the majors. This card has a current market value of about $150. Only 18 cards have been sold in the last year, and none above a grade 6. 
That leaves us with Smokey Burgess, card 357. He was the backup catcher for the Phillies, and like Heinzelman, lost his best years to World War II, where an injury sustained when his Jeep rolled over on him permanently damaged his throwing shoulder. He ended up one of the best pinch hitters of all time. The 52 Smokey Burgess is the most difficult card to find of the 52 tops high number Phillies, with a current average market value of about $500. High grade examples well exceed 2000. I had searched for this card for years. Years. Every card show and every card shop I visited, I would ask every dealer, Do you have any 52 high numbers? Only to receive a slight grimace and a slow shake of the head. Once, though, at the Dallas card show, the stars aligned. I was there on the first day and an hour early. As I was walking in, I held the door for an old man with a hand truck of card boxes. It looked to be a little too heavy for him, so I offered to help. He was a vintage dealer, and this was his last show. He accepted my help. As I helped him lay out his table, I noticed his craggled, arthritic hands shook a bit as he struggled to organize his cards into handmade wooden card boxes oxidized from years and years of card shows. We made one more trip out to his van. We chatted about cards, about baseball. He told me about his grandkids and his great-grandkids. I told him about my son and my dad. We set up his booth through a myriad of stories. The show opened and I stayed at his booth and went through his cards, which were meticulously organized by year and by card number, with clear dividers and labels for everything. He was old school. No sleeves, no card savers, just cards. After pulling my pile of gems from his coffers, which included a beautiful 65 Jim Bunning and a 59 Ashburn and Willie Mays Hitting Kings card, I asked if he had any 52 high numbers. He nodded slowly in the affirmative. He went into his locked case and pulled out a small pile of eight cards. I quickly thumbed through, and the second to last card was Smokey himself. The surge of adrenaline was palpable. It was the first time I had ever seen the card in person. It was in a top loader, but it was otherwise ungraded. A little crease at the top, but in good nick. I made a generous offer on the spot, perhaps too generous given my excitement. He smiled a bit, shaking his head. Nah, I owe you for the pound of flesh. Just promise you won't sell it, and you'll pass it down to your son. I gave him a few bucks for the other cards I'd picked out. We exchanged emails, shook hands, and parted ways. At the end of the day, before I left, I stopped back at his booth. He told me another dealer had come and bought all of his 52 cards, including the high numbers. Their plan was to send them all to PSA for grading and to auction them off on eBay one by one. My pal, Smokey, though, was saved from this icy slabbed hell and will live out his days in warmth and comfort with his buddies from 52. Not only did I finally pick up the 52 Smokey Burgess, but it came with a story. The best kind of story. A baseball card story. Thanks for watching. I hope there's 52 high numbers at your local card store. And tune in next time for more baseball card stories, legends, and more.